Hi students, we are going to discuss the chemical coordination and integration. As I have already discussed in the class that the human system is basically controlled in two ways. First is neural control and coordination. Second is chemical control. Now we have the neural control already and we have discussed in detail also. Now why we need chemical control as well? So there are some reason we need to discuss. First, the neural coordination as we know it is very fast but it is short lived. That is the first reason. Second, because the nerve fibers they do not innervate all the cells of our body. As a result we cannot control the cellular function or we cannot regulate the physiological functions at the cellular level. And for that, we need a special kind of coordination and, and, that, and that is why we need chemical coordination or chemical control. Now the chemical control is actually carried out by hormones. Now what are hormones? Hormones are non-nutrient chemicals which acts as intercellular messengers and are produced in stress amount. What do you mean by that? Hormones are actually non-nutrient. That means they are not having any nutritive value. And they are basically working as a chemical messengers. And we require hormone in a very small quantity. The hormones are actually secreted in our body at a very small quantity. And the entire system or the physiology of, a, of our body is actually basically controlled by both the system that is neural and the chemical control or in other way we can say the endocrine system. The neural system and the endocrine system jointly coordinate and regulate the physiological function in our body. Now let us move to the, let us move on to the next page. Now, hormones, what are hormones we have just discussed? Now we should know that hormones are actually from where we are getting the hormones. The hormones are produced and secreted by glands. Now the glands are of basically three types. As you can see, the number one is the endocrine gland. I have mentioned there, you can see in the bracket that ductless exocrine gland with duct and number three is heterocrine gland heterocrine gland that is both endocrine part and exocrine part are present if a gland is having both the endocrine and exocrine part then that gland particular gland is known as heterocrine gland we'll discuss it in detail later on first of all let us discuss about the endocrine gland now what are ducts? What do you mean by duct? As you have already studied in the chapter of uh, in, the, in the previous chapters in human physiology uh, that uh, like let us let us take an example of salivary gland which is a exocrine gland and which is a gland with a duct. Now what are the duct? What are duct actually? Ducts are you know tubule like structure the tube like structure which is connecting the targeted area with the gland. The gland will secrete the particular the gland will secrete the particular substance and it will pour that particular substance or the chemical directly to the targeted area with the help of the tube-like structure. And the, that tube-like structure is actually known as duct. If a gland is having that type of that tube-like structure, then those glands, those those glands are known as exocrine gland. Example, salivary gland, liver, etc. And if a gland is not having that tube-like structure or a duct then those type of glands are known as endocrine gland. Now in this chapter we are actually basically discuss, going to discuss about the endocrine glands only. Examples, thyroid, pituitary, etc. Now what are heterocrine glands? As, as I already discussed with you in the beginning that heterocrine gland means it is having both the functions of endocrine and exocrine. Let us take an example like pancreas as an example where it is having the islets of Langerhans and you know like uh, it is also having um, uh, the other examples let us take another example like testis ovaries 
these are having the endocrine function then exocrine in case of pancreas it is secreting the digestive juices etc next next is 